felt a sense of, wow, you know, I could have been on that flight with those 228 passengers that died. Mm -hmm. She died in a car accident yesterday. Yeah. You know, like people would call me like, man, final destination. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. Like she tried to escape. Death. You know, so we all have a, a date and a time that's assigned to us. We don't know when that date or time is. And so the importance of forgiveness is because how many of you love your mother and your father? Every hand up, right? You don't know. How many of you love your brothers and your sisters? <laughs> she bad, she like. <laughs> you holding a grudge and you're not forgiving and you stay mad at people and they go out that front door in the morning, you don't have, you don't know if they're returning or not. Right? And you may have, because you was holding that grudge in your heart, knowing you love them, but you mad at them, you're going to prove something to them. This world is crazy out here, and all type of stuff is happening on a daily basis, and you never know if you're going to see that person again. My oldest sister, she, her and my mother wasn't speaking for the three weeks leading up to my mother having a stroke. And I know it still impacts her to this because it was like they mad at each other. You know what I'm saying? And I was okay with my mother passing because for, number one, number one, she was a Christian. She was saved and had always lived a saved life and a Christian lifestyle. And so I was confident that she was in a better place, number one. Number two, me and her had a great relationship. I was there with her when she had the stroke. The one who called the ambulance was there, you know, taking care of her through that. But I was confident in knowing that she had lived a life, she had lived a, a, a God, a, a, a God-filled life, and she had taught me as much as she could teach me, and it was her time. I didn't get mad at God and say, why did you take my mother at this time? And so I still ain't bought her that house, I promised her all that. You know what I'm saying? So I have a piece about it, whereas my sister, who they was into it the last three weeks of my mother's life, because we don't forgive, we hold grudges, and we take things for granted. To this day, she's still struggling with the fact that she was on bad terms with her mother when she died. And I wouldn't want that to happen to anybody because we don't, I mean, I ain't trying to scare y'all or nothing like, you know, like when y'all leave here, you know, to be thinking about death or anything like that. But my main point of, of, of talking to you all today is to talk about, as young Christians, we gotta forgive. We gotta let stuff go. If you have people in your circle that's not healthy for you, it can be family. Sometimes family, sometimes you gotta get away from, like growing up, it was certain cousins I couldn't play with because they weren't healthy <laughs> for me. My mother didn't allow me to play with them at once we got to a certain age. And because adults can sometimes see things, you know, these were her sister's kids, but she felt like her sister, her sister wasn't raising her kids right. <clears throat> And, and these particular two cousins, right now, one is a drug addict, and the other one been in and out of jail. And so when my mother stopped me from spending time with them, it was probably at the right time because maybe I might have ended up indulging and doing some of the things that they was doing. So you have to look at your circle of friends. Are they positive? Are they encouraging you? You know, are they, are they motivating you to go to college? How many of you here feel they have a good circle of friends? Y'all don't have good friends? Oh, y'all don't have no friends? I have friends, but they're not. Okay, how are your friends? They decent. They decent? Okay. How many leaders we got in here? Okay. Why do you consider yourself a leader? I don't follow. You don't follow? Okay, good answer. Mm -hmm. What about you? Because I'm a good person. You're a good person. You speak your mind. Okay. You consider yourself a leader? Yeah. Um, because I don't like following people. They can't follow me. Oh, I heard that. She said they can follow me if they want to. Like on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I can't consider myself a leader because sometimes I could do something and not do the same thing that other person did, but sometimes I fall off track and need to start doing other things. Okay.
Very honest. Very good answer. Thank you. Young lady? It's kind of the same thing she said, but sometimes I fall off a lot, but mm -hmm. I get my head back. Okay. And okay. then I'll come and be like, well, what should I do? Right. And then I'll do them. You know, should do that. You know, so tell them a little bit. So that's why I consider myself. Okay. Okay. Then, you a leader or follow? Leader. Why are you a leader? Okay, we'll come back to you. Think on that. <laughs> Where's it? Well, people just follow me. People just follow you? You want me to smile, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he look like, he look, he look, he look, he look, he might be a, a Ricky off of Boys in the Hood. <laughs> 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 he said, I don't know, people just follow me. Go ahead. I'm in between. You in between? Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure out that leader follower thing mm -hmm. right now. You know, a good leader at one time followed. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not always a bad thing to follow, because here at this church, uh, as a part of this ministry, you do follow, but it's some people that you would leave parties, and people would be drinking, and then there's a there's a, a ritual. I know here in the Chicagoland area on New Year's Eve, people, if they own guns, they go outside and shoot the guns up in the air, you know what I'm talking about? And so um, I convinced my mother that I was going to go to this New Year's Eve party, and, you know, I'd be home, wouldn't be no problems. Um, and the way I rolled back then was, and to a certain degree now, I even, I'm, I'm even the same way, but if I went somewhere with you, right, and you, and you, and if I went somewhere with the three of you all, you came and picked me up and said, come on, man, we're going to go here. If somebody messed with you while we were out, while we were there, it's like it was, it was the same. As if they were messing with me. Did, they, did anybody roll like that? Like if you if you go somewhere with your girlfriend, somebody bothering your girlfriend, it's like they bothering you, right? Okay. So hey, how you doing? So I went to this New Year's Eve party with three of my friends, right? And um, one time, introduce yourselves since y'all just came in. Put slide, pull the chair up, just. Yeah. Albert. Albert. Okay. Samantha. Samantha. All right. How y'all doing? Okay. But I went to this New Year's Eve party with three of my friends. I've always been a big guy. I played football. I played. I had the opportunity to play college football, and um, I was also known as the send off guy. Y'all know send -off what the send off is? Yeah. Well, now I wasn't the send off artist. I was the person that got sent off, right? All the time. Oh, don't act like y'all ain't never been sent off. Everybody in here done been sent off at some point. Well, that night was my night to be sent off. I came, basically what they could do, they would put the cables on me. We called it putting the cables on. We charge, they would charge me up, you know. And uh, because I was always the big guy and a knockout artist, you know, they could charge me up and I would go and do something that ain't had nothing to do with me, right? And so we had this party on New Year's Eve and three of the guys I came with, we all dispersed throughout the room. I'm way over in the corner talking to some of the young ladies that was there. And I happened to look out the corner of my eye and way over here, one of the guys I came with, he getting into it with somebody. Now, I don't know if he started it. I don't know. I just know that I got this allegiance that because I came somewhere with Tremaine and now I see Tremaine over there into it. Now, Tremaine could have said something about this man's mama and I don't know. But I jumped up, ran across the room, then ask no questions and just start swinging, right? As a result of that, the fight continued from in the basement and, and ended up outside in the front yard. It was, it was New Year's Eve, it was winter time. But this was the problem, it was five of them. And I think, I thought everybody in the house that was with me came out the house. They did. I ran out the house by myself. These guys was running. But when they turned around, they said, this fool by himself, right? And so now it's five against one. And I'm fighting, and I'm swinging, I'm, I'm, in, I'm intoxicated because I've been drinking, doing all that stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. And one of them had a hammer. And he pulled, he pulled out the hammer out of a double. He was carrying around a hammer. And, you know, you got some crazy folks out here. He carried around a hammer in a double bag. <laughs> pulled out the hammer and just and hit me three times in the head. I got the scar right here right here, and then there's an area in the back of my head where hair don't grow to this day. 
immediately had to be rushed to the emergency room. Now, the thing that the doctor said that helped to save me was the fact that I was intoxicated. Because had I just been sober like I am now, and somebody just walked up and hit me in the head three times with a hammer, I probably would have went into shock, you know what I'm saying, and died. The other thing the doctor said was that when I got hit right here, had it been an inch lower, I would have lost this eye. Had it been an inch this way, it would have hit me in the temple, and I probably would have died, you know what I'm saying, or been had brain. Some people still think I got brain damage. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I was, I was blessed through that situation. Now, what do you think I probably want to do to the gentleman that did that to me? Kill. Kill him. Right? I'm 19 years old. You done hit me in my face of all places. You done hit me in my face because at that age, we really into our image. And I'm parents and things like that. I, I, I'm embarrassed. I'm humiliated. You know, everybody talking about me. You know what I'm saying? And so I had the so-called friends on this side. Matt, you got to strike back. You know, we can go get a gun. We know where they live. You know, things of that nature. They was encouraging me. Has anybody ever encouraged you in the wrong way? Anybody ever experienced that? Was somebody trying to send you off in the wrong way? Well, I had guys on this side of me saying, hey, strike back. And, and for me to strike back, I would have had to kill somebody. Because for what they did to me, I had two, I had two black eyes for three months. I mean, my, you know, they used to call, I don't know what they call it now, but we used to call it pumpkin head deluxe. PhD. Yeah, PhD. Somebody give you a PhD, right? I had a pumpkin head to love. I mean, I already got a big head. So just imagine how swole my face was, right? So I went through that process where I'm listening to these guys over here strike back, strike back, save face. Because I'm humiliated, I'm embarrassed. But then I had the, the real friends on this side. And each and every one of you have at least one real friend. I had the real friend on this side said, Mac. Let it go, man. Let it go. You gonna, you keep fooling with that, you're going to either end up dead or you're going to end up in prison, right? And so for me, going through that experience, I always tell people, young people, that it was actually a blessing. My mother, to the day she died, would tell me, son, that's one of the best things that happened to you because she believed that God has a way of getting your attention, okay? And you can run and you can do all the foolishness and all that type of stuff. But God, he would use, the, the, the words say, he used the, the, the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And so that situation was a turning point for me where it was like, a, 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 as a Oprah or somebody would say, it was a light bulb moment for me because I had to make a decision. Do I strike back, kill this man, spend the rest of my life in prison, right? So now it's two lives lost. Or do I forgive and let it go? Let me give you a definition for forgiveness, because people think forgiveness is about forgetting what has happened to you. You know, we all got some stuff that right now, we, 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 I can just tell, everybody in this room is holding on to something, some pain, some hurt, somebody did us wrong, somebody did something. When I was 10, when I was 5, yesterday, this morning, they made me come here, I ain't going to never forgive mom for making me come here this morning. But the thing is, let me give you a definition for forgiveness. Forgiveness is not forgetting. I think you should always remember. Actually, the gift of reflection and, uh, and ability to remember and have a memory is really a gift from God. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, and I learned that through losing my mother three years ago. When I was 35 years old, my mother passed away. She had a stroke and died. You know what I'm saying? But the gift that I thank God for is the ability to reflect on the times that we had, different uh, milestones in my life when I graduated high school she was there when I graduated college when I got my master's degree you know things of that nature so so remembering is a good thing so when it comes to forgiveness we don't want anybody to forget what it is that has happened to them in their life but the definition that I want you all to remember is that forgiveness is remembering without anger see a lot of times we remember something that that it, have you ever had anything bad happen to you? And so sometimes we'll, uh, we'll recall these times in our life. How about you? You ever had anything bad happen to you? So we'll recall these things in our life, and it'll, it'll, it'll bring up all types of emotions, right? 